The Steelers' clean sweep of their 2023 quarterbacks makes history. But will it work? Welcome to the Steelers update from Penn Live, where we keep track of all things Stellas. So you don't have to. This is John Lucy reporting. It's been a history making offensive overhaul for the playoff starved Steelers. Not since 1957 has there been this kind of carnage in the quarterback's room. That's when the Steelers last made a clean sweep of their poor passers from the season before. Shown the door in 57 were Ted Marchiabroda and Jack Scarbath. Ushered in to lift those lovable losers to new heights of passing were Earl Morrill, Len Dawson, and Jack Kemp. Hey, it should have worked out back then given those now gaudy names Pittsburgh brought in at the position. Yet it would take the Steelers another 13 seasons to get it right when they finally drafted Terry Bradshaw with the number one pick in 1970. The rest, as they say, is history. Clearly the Steelers, who haven't won a playoff game in seven seasons, are seeking a far quicker return of their quarterback changeover this time around. The architect of the overhaul, second-year GM Omar Khan, told the gathered press at the annual NFL meetings in Orlando this week that the suddenness and completeness of the quarterback overhaul came as a shock even to him. Quote, am I surprised? asked Khan, who had recently professed full faith in former first-round pick Kenny Pickett entering his third season. He added this, quote, If you'd have told me a month ago when we spoke in Indy that a month later Russell Wilson and Justin Fields would be our quarterbacks, I'd say, yeah, I'd be a little bit surprised. Yeah, unquote. You'll remember Khan brought in Broncos cast off Wilson, and then right away Pickett signaled his desire for a trade, a change of scenery, as Coach Mike Tomlin put it. The Pitt product became expendable when the trade value for Bears passer Justin Fields plunged. Khan pounced. Quote, Obviously, some things transpired, Khan said, referring to that quick change of his full faith pledge in Pickett. Quote, things changed from when we were in Indy to here. Some things happened and probably didn't anticipate the way things would go, unquote. Hey, no one anticipated this. No one. Now, the final Pittsburgh passer from 2023, Mason Rudolph, who was fresh from rallying his team to the playoffs, was allowed to walk as well and for the paltry price of a one-year deal at $287 million. He's now a Tennessee Titan. Meanwhile, Kahn and the Steelers rounded out the QB room with journeyman Kyle Allen, a seven-year vet joining his fifth NFL team. He spent last season up in Buffalo, but saw the most action in 2019 when he was with the Carolina Panthers. He's 7-12 and in 19 career starts. Said Khan, quote, we feel good about where the room is. We feel good about 2024 with the quarterbacks we have, unquote. And with that, Steelers' history was made, and it was done so at bargain basement prices for the most important and valuable position in sports. Combined, Wilson and Fields will cost the Steelers an eye-poppingly low $4.4 million for this coming season. The bigger question is whether the wholesale overhaul at the quarterback position ranks as a mere footnote 
or the beginning of a rich new Steelers chapter of excellence. The plan for the new Pittsburgh passers, as outlined by Tomlin, is to hand the ball to Wilson. This would allow the one-time Super Bowl winning quarterback to pursue destiny. Said Tomlin, quote, The most attractive component of Wilson's profile to me is his quest for greatness, his chase for legacy. This is not a guy who is hungry, meaning that he can be satisfied. This is a guy that's driven, and you want to work with people of that mindset, unquote. Tomlin clearly sees something in Wilson that the Broncos did not. Why else would they pay Russell $38 million just to go away? Now, Tomlin did acknowledge some of these issues, hinting that perhaps even the Steelers do not know what Russell Wilson has left in the tank. Said Tomlin, quote, he's got a lot of work to do. Obviously, he's had some professional challenges, particularly in recent years, and he appears to be a guy that wants to meet those challenges head on and continue to move forward with his career. And that was attractive, unquote. Attractive? Well, maybe. A sure thing? Definitely not. The question marks multiply when it comes to Justin Fields. The Bears, who hold the number one pick in the upcoming draft, could only watch as Fields' trade value, once expected to be lofty, plunged to a paltry sixth-round conditional pick. Clearly, teams saw flaws in the turnover-prone quarterback's game as he enters his fourth NFL season. plan for Fields in Pittsburgh is to watch and to learn. These Steelers are not built for a QB who's careless with the football. Fields is now in the same position Pickett would have been after the Steelers signed Wilson. Now, Pickett balked at the prospect of sitting behind Wilson, and he now resides in Philly, where he's sitting behind an even more established quarterback in Jalen Hurts. Fields, on the other hand, is reportedly eager to learn. Said Tallman, quote, Just from my conversations with Justin, I know he's excited about working alongside Russell and maybe learning some of those veteran tricks of the trade and things that Wilson picked up from being in this league for over a decade, unquote. Hey, that's very, very good news. For the Steelers' clean sweep at quarterback to really make history, they need to have Fields rise beyond his chaotic, turnover-filled tenure in the Windy City. He needs to fulfill his pedigree and potential that we all thought he had coming out of Ohio State. Tomlin, in words unique to the loquacious coach, said he sees plenty of meat left on that bone when it comes to Fields' potential. Quote, oh my gosh, he oozes talent and potential. He's worn the responsibility of being a franchise quarterback but still gets the opportunity to come into a community-like situation and learn from a guy who's been doing it for over a decade, unquote. And that is Mike Tomlin gushing about the situation Fields is coming into with the Steelers. And Tomlin did promise this, quote, Justin will be given an opportunity to compete, unquote. The only question is the timing. Tomlin refused to be pinned down. So be it. Change has come quickly to these Steelers. But all the fallout of Pittsburgh's clean sweep at quarterback will take far longer to play out. After all, history's judgment cannot be rushed. We have much more on all the big Steelers' moves as both Khan and Tomlin discuss their new toys. That and much more in this deep dive edition of your Steelers Update Podcast. Hey, and be sure to check out my full print column first thing Thursdays on Penn Live, and yes, in the print version of the Patriot News. 
As always, it will be packed with plenty of memes, bringing all the latest, greatest Steelers debate to life and to laughs. Right now, let's get right to it. First up, we have Tim Benz with Trib Live, and he's taking a skeptical wait-and-see approach on all these Steelers' much-touted turnover at the quarterback position. Benz thinks Mason Rudolph should have received his chance to prove last year's playoff run was for real. And he seems highly skeptical of both Russell Wilson and Justin Fields. Are they really the upgrades Steelers Nation is longing for? Here's Tim Benz with Trib Live. Quote, Russell Wilson and Justin Fields are in. Kenny Pickett, Mason Rudolph, and Mitch Trubisky are out. That should result in an upgrade in the level of play they got from Pickett last year, but I'm dubious it will equate to the level of play they got from Rudolph over the last three weeks of the regular season. Now, again, Rudolph still wasn't good enough to get a playoff win for the first time in 2016, Ben's notes. But he goes on to say, quote, could Rudolph have replicated that effort for the length of a 17-game campaign? Apparently, Tomlin and the rest of the Steelers didn't think so because retaining Rudolph would have been easy. The best offer he got elsewhere was just a one-year, $2.87 million contract with the Tennessee Titans. But based on what the Steelers have tried to do to prepare for Ben Roethlisberger's retirement and recover from it, we have every reason to be uncomfortable with the franchise's ability to get the right quarterback under center. Pickett's career in Pittsburgh lasted only two years. Trubisky was a bust, and whatever they thought of Rudolph when he got drafted, it didn't manifest until the end of his time here, and they were not convinced about his ability to be that player long term. So, yeah. I'm anxious about how Wilson and Fields are going to work out. At some point, specifically when the ball is kicked off to start the regular season in early September, we have to start analyzing Wilson and Fields based on how good or bad they are on the field and not how cost-effective they were to acquire. And when it comes to this franchise ability to acquire and cultivate quarterbacks, aside from Terry Bradshaw in 1970 and Ben Roethlisberger in 2004, I hope you'll understand why I may have a little anxiety in that regard, unquote. And there you have Tim Benz of Trib Live taking a very skeptical view of this clean sweep of quarterbacks that has so enlivened and invigorated and excited the rest of Steelers Nation. There's reason to be cautious that all of this is going to work out. A lot of reasons. Now, from Mike Tomlin's perspective, the favorite free agent acquisition is not among the quarterbacks. It's one Patrick Queen the inside linebacker Pittsburgh purloined from the rival Ravens. As Jerry Dulac with the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette tells us, Tomlin was talkative as ever about the qualities Queen brings to the Steelers' D. Dulac writes this, quote, With all the attention focused on the acquisition of quarterbacks Russell Wilson and Justin Fields, the addition of Queen is probably the Biggest move the Steelers have made when they signed him to a three-year, $41 million contract with an $11 million signing bonus. Queen won't be 25 until August, but he started all 67 games for the Ravens since he was the 28th overall pick in the 2020 draft. In that time, he's had four interceptions, five forced fumbles, six fumble recoveries, and 13 and a half sacks. They're hoping he'll be the missing piece at inside linebacker, a position that has been a revolving door since one Ryan Shazier went out with that devastating career-ending injury 
in 2016. Tomlin's take on the Steelers capturing Queen? Well, Coach says this, quote, He's an all-situations linebacker, and so that's exciting. He's a guy that's a three-down player. He's a guy that can do a lot of things, can tackle, can cover, can blitz, and he's a 24-and-a-half-year-old dude. So he's got that great combination of youth and experience, and I think that those are some of the reasons why we're really excited about bringing him on board, unquote. Then Tomlet added this, quote, I can tell you how exciting it is just because of the familiarity as well. We've seen a lot of them. He's seen a lot of us. And it's going to be an exciting marriage, unquote. Hey, Steelers Nation should be throwing rice at this union. Best of all, though, Dulac tells us, it might be a very troubling divorce for the Ravens who are losing their queen. Dulac writes, quote, Harbaugh, coach John Harbaugh, that is, acknowledged that it will be different seeing queen in a Steelers uniform when these division rivals meet for two, possibly three times in 2024. Said Harbaugh, quote, Patrick is a great player, a great guy. I love Patrick Queen. He's one of my all-time favorite people. We're going to be friends forever. I'll give him a hug before the game with the Steelers. I'll root for him except then. He'll bring a great football player, great attitude, great work ethic, everything he brought to us. I'm a big fan of Pat Queen, unquote. That's the coach who's losing him. And he's gushing. He's appreciative. He's going to be friends forever with this this icon of a football player, an icon inside linebacker, a guy who makes plays and loves football. That's what you want to hear when he's coming to the Steelers. So Steelers Nation should love this deal best of all. I, for one, can't wait to see Queen capturing the other team's quarterback, and ball carrier. Going to be sweet. It's going to be sweet. Now, finally, with, with all the outside free agents being brought into the 412 area code, we may forget that Omar Khan and the Steelers have some work to do with aging defensive lineman Cam Hayward and his outsized contract that's going into its final season. We go back to Trib Live's Tim Banz, who gives us the lowdown of where things stand with Cam and his contract. Benz writes this, quote, Omar Khan didn't provide much context about how the team could perhaps restructure Cam Hayward's $22.4 million salary cap hit for the upcoming season. Khan did say that Hayward will be in a Steelers uniform in 2024, despite the current cost and Cam's recent injury woes. Quote, we'll talk through those things, Khan said. Quote, there's still a lot of time, but you know, Cam Hayward is going to be here. And so we'll figure it out, unquote. Hayward, as you know, is entering the final year of this deal. Last month, he was named the Walter Payton Man of the Year in the NFL, and that is the most prestigious award in the league, but he's a 35-year-old former All-Pro, and he's balked at the idea of taking a pay cut. Hayward missed six games because of a groin injury last season. He totaled just two sacks and six tackles for loss. Those are the lowest numbers he's posted since he missed most of the 2016 season, unquote. In other words, yes, there is work to do there with Cam, but of course we know just because of who he is, Omer Khan's wheeling and dealing is not done by a long shot. We need more beef on the offensive line. We need premium pass catchers. We need a center for the future, uh, the centerpiece of the offense, if you will, and Khan is not done. There are more free agents deals to come, possibly at center, he has hinted. And of course, the NFL selection meeting, otherwise known as the NFL draft, 
awaits at the end of April. It's going to be exciting. These 2024 Steelers are taking shape, but the 53-man roster has yet to be all put into place. And of course, we're going to cover it piece by piece as it does fall into place. It's going to be all right here on your Steelers Update podcast, which is fresh every Wednesday afternoon. So sign up wherever you get your favorite audio so you get it automatically. Fresh, hot, steaming takes right off my microphone. And of course, log on to penlive.com anytime for your real-time Steelers news.